Hi everyone and welcome to my Christmas book gift guide. I've been really looking forward to sharing this video with you and I hope you'll find it helpful. I think there have been so many amazing books that have come out in 2023 and I've had a really fun time actually thinking back over the year and having a look at my bookshelves and pulling out some of my favourite books from 2023 and also some that I think would just make amazing gifts for Christmas. So as always I'll link to everything I talk about in the video description box down below so you can get all of the links there. And yes I can't wait to share all of this bookish goodness with you so let's get started. First of all I thought I'd share a few things that I think would be lovely to find in your Christmas stocking. So let's have a look. I think every year I've talked about Carol Ann Duffy's Christmas poems. I love how they're produced in these really sweet little books that are always gorgeously illustrated as well. This one mum actually picked up for me from our local bookshop so I managed to get a signed copy which was really special but I just love these little books and I think they're just the type of thing that is so nice to pull out of your Christmas stocking especially if you're a bookworm so I always recommend Carol Ann Duffy's little books of a Christmas poem each year. And then I'm a huge fan of Jamie Beck who is the most gorgeous photographer. I follow her on Instagram as I'm sure many of you do and she shares her stunningly beautiful life in Provence and her photos are just to die for. You know I love my florals so that's one of the other reasons that I really love Jamie's work because she loves flowers as well. And this latest book from her, The Flowers of Provence, is a true work of art. You can see how stunning it is. And this really is a photography book. Um, there's a nice introduction, but a lot of it is really just about the photos. So it's just stunning visual inspiration type of book to enjoy flicking through on Christmas morning, maybe dreaming of an upcoming holiday to France and just getting inspired for 2024. I think it's just so stunning and yes, real photography and travel inspiration in this one and I love the focus too on the flowers of Provence so this is one I just got recently and I've already been loving dipping into it. And then I also always love these bird biographies by Stephen Moss. I think they're so well done. He's such a great writer and this is just an amazing little series. They've done lots of birds already. There have been biographies of the robin, the wren, um, the swallow and a few others but I was really thrilled to get the latest which is one of the owl. And this seems particularly appropriate for winter. And again, it's just a sweet little book that I think would be lovely to find in your Christmas stocking for any bookworm, but also for any nature lovers and bird watchers. I think that this is just a charming little series and this is the latest in the titles. Now, I think every year I also say how much I love Slightly Foxed, which is one of my favourite literary magazines, and one of their issues slipped into a Christmas stocking would never go amiss, that's for sure. But also, this year, Slightly Fox have come out with a calendar that I think you could just about squeeze into a stocking. It's quite a slim calendar and they don't do these every year. So when they do do them, they're extra special. I love that each month they showcase one of the covers from a previous issue. They always have such lovely artwork that's featured on their magazines. So it's really nice to have it collected in calendar form with some highlights from their magazines over the years and the artwork on those magazines. And they're about to celebrate a really special anniversary in 2024 which is their 20th anniversary. So they've done this calendar to celebrate. So this is definitely the year. If you've never bought one of their calendars before, I love them. And to get one to commemorate them 
having their 20th anniversary I think is really special. So yes, I absolutely love the calendar and it's always well worth getting, but it would make a wonderful gift too. And then their books are of course always a brilliant size. These definitely would slip into a stocking. I also love to bring these books with me when I'm traveling because they'll fit even into very small bags. They're very light. And this is one of their latest ones, A Classical Education by Richard Cobb, which is a very unusual memoir. I'll be sharing a review of this one soon. But any of their titles are wonderful to choose from. You could go for something really classic, like 84 Charing Cross Road, or you can choose one of their less well-known memoirs. But do have a look at their website because it's just full of lovely things for book lovers. I've been a fan for many, many, many years now, and I'm really excited for them that it's their 20th anniversary coming up next year. But I know so many people love Sightly Fox, so do have a look at their website. Another stocking stuffer that I think would be amazing, even though it's a virtual one, is my Bookish Almanac, which is an Instagram subscription for book lovers. I'll put a link to it so you can check it out. But you are able to purchase this as a gift for someone as well as for yourself. And every day on Instagram, I share a post that is related to the seasons, the British countryside, or my love of literature. So I share a lot of book recommendations, seasonal quotes, and also some snippets about me and just a bit of behind the scenes of my life and what I'm getting up to. So it's so much fun. I love to create it. I love to think that it is a really fun thing that other book lovers would enjoy as well. So I'll put a link to that too if you would like to think about choosing it as a gift for a bookworm in your life, that would be amazing. And I'll also see if I can create a little image that you could always print out and put in someone's stocking to share the gift of the bookish almanac with them. But now let's move on to my pile of fiction choices. Okay, so first up, I have spoken about this book before, but I needed to share it again because I think it would be a wonderful choice for a Christmas present. And that is Who Killed Father Christmas and Other Seasonal Mysteries, edited by Martin Edwards. This is in the British Library Crime Classics series. And I think that this is just so much fun. It's like a little chocolate box of Christmassy short stories, the perfect kind of book to dip into over the winter holidays. I love to read this kind of book in December. It just gets me in that festive mood and I'd be absolutely thrilled to find this under the Christmas tree. So any of the Christmassy books from the British Library crime classic series are well worth looking at. This is their latest one, so it's definitely worth checking out. And then another one that I myself am really looking forward to reading is The Long Shadow by Celia Fremlin. I spoke in the summer about how much I enjoyed Uncle Paul by Celia Fremlin. It was such a good domestic thriller, not too scary, but definitely suspenseful. And there was an amazing twist to the end. I've since read another one of Celia Fremlin's books and I really enjoyed that too. This one I've been saving as a winter read. I just love the cover. Faber, I think, recently brought this out again in this new edition with the amazing wintry cover. And this is a book that's set over Christmas, so it's a great seasonal read. It would make a great Christmas gift as well, especially if you know someone who maybe really loved Uncle Paul, if they read it too this year and want to try another one of her books. I also, of course, love the British Library Women Writers series, and the one I've chosen to highlight from this past year that they've released is Introduction to Sally by Elizabeth von Arnhem. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, then you probably know how much I love Elizabeth von Arnhem's books. The Enchanted April is of course such an amazing classic, but there are many others of hers that I love, including Father, which has also been republished by the British Library Women Writers. And I think a couple of years ago now, I read Introduction to Sally and I really enjoyed it. It's a very quirky, funny book. It's kind of this 
wry twist on Pygmalion and it's definitely one to add to your collection. If you're an Elizabeth von Arnhem fan or you know someone who is or if you know someone who you think would really enjoy her books then this is a great one to choose as well. I was so happy when the British Library brought it out this year because it is a hard one to find but I think it's well worth reading so the one I'm really highlighting from what they've brought out this year. Then one of the books I really enjoyed the most in 2023 is Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwang. This was such a page turner. If you want a book that is really going to keep you gripped over the holidays, then Yellow Face is definitely one either to gift to someone or to read for yourself um, because this really does keep you turning those pages, wanting to get to the end and find out what happens. It's an amazing example of an unreliable and also pretty unlikable narrator. It's very cleverly done. Um, it covers some topics that are really relevant to today, like cultural appropriation, also things about copying and the difference between a really original thinker and someone who actually cannot really think or create for themselves at all either. It's a really interesting comparison made between two very different types of writers. Anyway, there's just so much to get and to discuss about this book, but ultimately it's just a fast paced and engrossing read. And then, finally, I also wanted to share another book I enjoyed a lot this year, which is A Lady's Guide to Scandal by Sophie Irwin. I would say this is a great choice for anyone who's enjoyed Sanditon, the television show, which I have really enjoyed. This one is a bit of a nod to Jane Austen's Persuasion, which I really appreciate. It's about a young, newly widowed woman, Eliza, who has inherited a fortune, but on one condition that no scandal can be attached to her name. If a scandal does occur in which she is somehow implicated, then she will lose the fortune. Now, Eliza has never sort of done anything unconventional or confrontational in her life, so no one is expecting this to be a problem. But when she decides to move to Bath, she realises there's a whole new world out there. And what follows is just really fun and entertaining. Definitely the type of book to try if you're a fan of Georgette Hare, for instance, as well. And I like, like I said, that there's a bit of a nod to persuasion, not only with the bath setting, but also with some of the plot. Eliza finds herself drawn to a former lover from her youth who ends up coming back into her life. But this book is actually a real twist on persuasion because another eligible bachelor crosses Eliza's path and she soon realises that she's in fact in love with two men and has to choose between them. So before sharing some more book ideas for your Christmas gifts, I also wanted to recommend a serious reader's light as being a perfect present for any bookworm in your life. As you know, I'm a huge fan of Serious Readers. They are very kindly sponsoring today's video. I've spoken before about how much I love their reading lights. I have their high definition floor light and it's a real family favourite actually because my dad has this light, my grandmother has this light and my mum uses it often as well. So it's a really great reading light. And I'm really pleased to say that I have a new offer code to share with you. So my offer code is SR423, and that gets you a hundred pounds off any of the high definition lights, as well as free international shipping. As I've said, I think this would make a great gift for any bookworms in your life, including yourself. 
I read with this light all the time. I live in a really old house and there aren't very many light sockets and there are no overhead lights in the living room or in my bedroom. So I love having my high definition light and I actually have the cordless option, which means I can carry the light around with me from room to room and just place it wherever I want, which is great for my personal living circumstances and it means that it really helps me to avoid eye strain because I can just bring a great reading light with me wherever I want to read. I also really like that I can adjust the width of the beam of the light as well as the brightness levels and what makes the high definition lights special is that they feature daylight wavelength technology which replicates the daylight spectrum as closely as technologically possible. So I find that that light isn't too harsh, it's really lovely to read in the light and that helps reduce eye strain a lot for me as well. So if you're keen to get a great reading light then do take advantage of my offer code again that is SR423 that gets you a hundred pounds off and free international shipping what's great for my international followers as well is that serious readers will change the plug on the light to match the socket um, of the country that you're ordering from so I think that's a handy tip to know but yes do take advantage of that offer code I'll put it in the video description box down below as well and I'll put the relevant link in there too so you can check out any of the high definition lights yourself but anyway, let's get back to some more book recommendations. Right, so let's move on to some non-fiction recommendations now. First of all, you probably already know how much I loved reading this book this year. This is Thunderclap, a memoir of art and life and sudden death by Laura Cumming. I love Laura Cummings' writing, it's just incredible and this book is really extraordinary and I have to say it's really ignited a love of Dutch art within me. I've always appreciated it but through reading this book which is a memoir partly of Laura's life and her relationship with her father who was an artist himself but it also really goes into the history of a lot of the Dutch masters and their paintings and it's so eloquently beautifully written and it just taught me so much as well. It's one of those books that I know will stay with me for a long time and I really recommend it it would be a, an amazing gift for anyone in your life who either loves a good memoir or who is really interested in art um, because I think it's just a wonderful example of that kind of blended genre of book between art history and a bit of personal memoir too. So yes, I highly recommend this one. And then a bit of a more frivolous <laughs> recommendation is Indian Nights Beauty Edit, What Works When You're Older. So I love Indian Nights writing and I always enjoy her beauty recommendations and her columns about beauty. I think she's an amazing writer. I love her, no her novel, Darling, which was a sort of take on Nancy Mitford's The Pursuit of Love. But of course, Indian Nights really well known as a newspaper columnist and about her beauty writing. And this new book of hers looks really good. It's really for women maybe over 40, but there are lots of great recommendations in here that follow a kind of range of prices that are suited to different types of skin tones as well. And I think it just looks a really handy guide. I'm definitely a bit of a skincare and beauty junkie, especially skincare, I have to say. So I just love this type of thing. And this book is the kind of fun, frivolous read that can also be nice for over the Christmas holidays. And then another book, that I've recently added to my shelves is this one, Kate Humble, Where the Hearth Is, Stories of Home. And in this book, it says that Where the Hearth Is combines the rich, complex, and deeply personal stories of people living in home-built cabins and woodland hideaways, historic mansions, and remote islands. 
war-torn cities and even outer space with Kate Humble's personal reflections alongside inspiration from the natural world to illuminate the vital components, large or small, that make home a home. So this is a book that really explores that question, what does make a home? And I find that such a fascinating topic. I'm a real home buddy. I love having a comfortable, cozy home that I love to be in. Home really matters to me. So I, this is a topic that I can't wait to explore a bit more. And I think this would make fascinating reading, but it also make a lovely Christmas gift. And then another book that I recently added to my own shelves that I really cannot wait to read is Judy Dench on Shakespeare, The Man Who Pays the Rent. <laughs> I love that sort of subtitle. Uh, this looks fascinating. It's really Judy Dench's recollections of her life as an actress and what an important role Shakespeare has played in her career. And I just think this will be brilliant. I'm so excited to read this. And again, it's just the type of book that is fun to dip into when you're on holiday. In that time between sort of Christmas and New Year's, I can imagine curling up with this book. I myself can't wait. And then I wanted to share the latest book from one of my favorite nonfiction writers, Ascender Maxstone Graham, Jobs for the Girls, How We Set Out to Work in the Typewriter Age. I love Ascender's writings. She's looked at such interesting topics with her books. One of her first ones, Terms and Conditions, looked at what real life boarding schools in Britain were like. Um, and it was just a hilarious and fascinating read. Then her book, British Summertime Begins, looked at what happened to children during the British holidays um, from kind of pre-World War II up until around 1970 or so, I think. And it made just again, such interesting reading and you realize how much our lives have changed since then. And this one looks like it will be brilliant as well. I'm very much interested in women's history and that aspect of social history about women in the workplace. I think that will be fascinating. And yes, I absolutely can't wait to read this one. Her books are always so well written and just so engrossing. And then I very recently got this book, which I think looks amazing and would be a perfect gift for any historians in your life. And that is Normal Women by Philippa Gregory, 900 Years of Making History. It says, Normal Women is a book about millions of women, not just a few heroines. It is a radical retelling of our nation's story, putting women where they belong in history, center stage. Yes, this just looks like it will be such an important book actually, and one I cannot wait to read, but will make such a great Christmas gift as well. Another non-fiction book, this one's a memoir that I've really enjoyed. I've been reading it actually quite slowly, just dipping in and out of it over the past few weeks and months and really enjoying taking it at that leisurely pace. And that is The Farmer's Wife, My Life in Days by Helen Rebanks. And this looks at her life uh, living on a farm in the Lake District and about her role in that farm life and also her role as a wife and a mother. And it's just really beautifully written. I love that there are a few recipes scattered amongst the pages of this book too, but I just really do recommend this as a great memoir. It's a really nice gift for anyone who loves a bit of nature writing as well, because it's really interesting to read about farm life and also the beautiful Lake District from Helen's perspective. And then another book um, that 
I recently added to my shelves that I was really looking forward to getting is All Around the Year by Michael Mupurga with an introduction by Catherine Rundle. Um, this one is by Little Toller Books. They're another small publishing company and I highly recommend their books. They have a real focus on nature writing and nature memoirs. And this one looks so interesting. Again, it's a real account of life on a farm and it goes month by month through a year. It starts in September um, and it just makes really interesting reading. There is quite a lot about cows <laughs> um, and about the sort of real uh, sort of factual aspects of having livestock. Um, but what I also have in this book, for those who are slightly less interested in that side of things, is that there's some beautiful poetry um, that kind of introduces each month in the book too. I think Ted Hughes was a neighbour or lived like close to Michael Mapurgo and he's included some lovely Ted Hughes poems within this too and those I've actually really enjoyed looking at. Catherine Rundell, of course, um, is an amazing writer. She wrote The Golden Mole, which was a nature book I raved about last year. And of course, she's an amazing children's book writer too, as well as writing an amazing biography of John Donne. Uh, so I was really keen to read her introduction, which is brilliant as well. And then this is just such a nice little anthology, Nature Tales for Winter Nights, edited by Nancy Campbell. If you're a seasonal reader or you want a gift for someone who is a seasonal reader, then this type of anthology is such a good idea. I love that it has this focus on the season of winter and it's just a nice collection of different types of writing about this season. It'd be great if they did one for every season of the year. That would be so much fun because I think there can be a real emphasis on autumn and winter in particular with this type of anthology, perhaps because it is the Christmas season, but how lovely if they do more than just winter. However, I'm so happy they've done this one and it would make a wonderful gift. And then this has been, I think, a bit of an underrated book. I haven't seen it many places, but I've absolutely loved it. So I really have to praise this one very highly. It's Nature's Calendar, The British Year in 72 Seasons. And it's by Kira Chapman, Lula Ellender, Rowan James and Rebecca Warren. I think this started as a collaborative Twitter project between these women and it really developed into this book, which I think is such a fun backstory to have to this. But if you love nature writing, then definitely this is a book to try. It's such a beautiful description of the different seasons and those little micro seasons that occur as well through the British calendar. It's so well written. I love the um, entries from all of the women writers in this. I think it's also well done. And it's inspired me to look more closely at the natural world around me too. So yes, I've been really loving this and I know I'll be using it through next year too, to inspire me. And then this is a very interesting book for any gardeners in your life. An Almost Impossible Thing, The Radical Lives of Britain's Pioneering Women Gardeners by Fiona Davison. I think this is just such a fascinating area which I myself don't know much about. I really don't know the sort of history of how women got into gardening um, and I'm very keen myself to find out more about this. So this book just came out this year and I think it looks so fascinating. And then more of a kind of coffee table style book to enjoy for anyone who loves beautiful gardens is this one, Growing at Green Fields by Diana Yates, a seasonal guide to growing, eating and creating from a beautiful Scottish garden. Diana's Scottish setting is amazing. I follow her on Instagram and it's just so beautiful, all of the images that she shares and of course a lot of that spectacular scenery and her lovely photos are in this book as well. And it's just quite a practical guide 
to what to do through the year in the garden as well. I would at some point like to be able to garden a bit more myself. It's one of those things that one day, <laughs> I keep saying when I have a bit more time, uh, but this is the type of book that definitely inspires me. And like I said, her Instagram is well worth looking at too. And yes, this has just been a really beautiful book I've enjoyed looking at as well as reading this year. Then a few other more coffee table style books that I wanted to share with you as well. As you probably already know, I am a huge Jane Austen fan. So a book like this, Jane Austen's Wardrobe by Hilary Davidson, was something I was very excited to get. I loved Hilary Davidson's previous book, which I think was called Dress in the Age of Jane Austen. That was so interesting. I actually read that cover to cover, um, partly too because I wrote a review of it for Salvage magazine at the time, but I was also just so, so interested in it. And all of the research and detail that went into that book was absolutely brilliant. So I was really keen to get this new one by Hilary Davidson. And it's so well done. Hilary Davidson takes references to clothes from Jane Austen's letters. And the idea behind this book is one that all of the articles of clothing that are shown in this are referenced in Jane's actual letters. But also you're meant to be able to dip in and out of the book almost as if you were opening up someone's wardrobe and just pulling out a piece of clothing and then learning more of the history and the story behind that piece of clothing. And I love that idea that you don't have to read chronologically through this book. You really can just kind of open it at random or go to articles of clothing, for instance, that you have a bit more interest in and read about them and about their significance in Jane Austen's life. So I think it's just a really well designed book. It's packed full of beautiful images too. I also really like reading the snippets from Jane Austen's letters that sort of head each section of the book. It's so interesting and the way that Hilary Davidson really analyzes what Jane Austen says and she brings so much knowledge um, to this topic herself. It's just really, really well done. So anyone who's interested in Georgian England, Regency fashion, Jane Austen in particular, I think would just love this book. It's exactly the type of book to give as a Christmas gift to any Jane Austen fan in your life. I'm sure that they would adore it. So yeah, this has been a real highlight for me from 2023. And then a stunning book that is of course perfect for Christmas is this beautiful volume, The Christmas Book, published by Faden. I love looking through this. I mean, I'm going to have this on my coffee table in December so that I can really appreciate it. Um, I think it's full of just such quirky but also interesting aspects of Christmas. I think many people will find things that look familiar, that they can sort of nod along to. I remember, for instance, um, seeing this amazing installation at Tate Britain. It was so special, one of the years when I was living in London. So yeah, it's a type of book that you can flick through and it's a real celebration of Christmas, but for me at least, it also brings back some of my own Christmas memories and I just have a lot of, oh yes, I remember that, um, little moments when I've been looking through this, but also learning more about the Christmas season and Christmas through the ages and images that have been so important to Christmas and to what we now perceive as Christmas, what a modern Christmas means. So yeah, really interesting book, perfect coffee table um, read for this time of year. Yes, I think it's just stunningly done. And then for those who would like a little bit of travel inspiration, 
I, I realised both of the books actually that I've kind of chosen, Jamie Beck's book and then this one, uh, are really centred around France, <laughs> which I think shows that I'm missing France myself. But this one, Joie by Ajiri Aki, A Parisian's Guide to Celebrating the Good Life, has been a real standout sort of highlight for me this year. I love how she takes the idea of what it means to live the good to live the good life and how to sort of slow down and really appreciate life the French way but how to do that even within a city context I find it very inspiring and I just love all of the photography in the book too like I said I think I'm missing France I definitely want to go back at some point whenever I possibly can um, it's just so stunning so for any people who also are maybe missing France or want to dream of a French holiday then this book is perfect but also it gives great tips on how to slow down how to appreciate life and what things really sort of matter um, in life and there are lots of tips on like hosting parties for instance or hosting little dinner parties little menu suggestions suggestions of where to go in Paris and also just how to enjoy spending time alone as well as in a crowd which I love so yes I've really loved this book as well this year now let's get to my other pile of books some suggestions for all of the foodies in your life First up is this new Batsford anthology edited by Jane McMorland Hunter. It's a bedside companion for food lovers, an anthology of literary morsels for every night of the year. I adore these anthologies from Batsford. They're so well done. I think Jane McMorland Hunter is amazing. <laughs> she has such a vast literary knowledge. And this latest one is just so much fun. Lots of foodie delights for all of the food lovers in your life. And there's just so much to enjoy in this anthology. And then another great anthology is The Dinner Table. Over a hundred writers on food, selected by Ella Risbridger and Kate Young. This is quite a whopper, but a great book for those who love a bit of food writing. There's a really interesting selection in this book from more classic food writers through to contemporary ones. So there really is something for everyone to enjoy, I would say, in this anthology. And then a few cookbooks that I wanted to share with you. This one, Winter Wellness by Rachel de Thample, is one that I just got recently. I have a few of her other cookbooks and I really do enjoy them. Some of you may remember the lemon and um, garlic, lots of garlic <laughs> drink that my mum my and I made from one of her cookbooks at the start of the year and it was it was quite intense but to be fair we didn't get sick <laughs> so I don't know maybe I should try it again but I really like the look of this new cookbook which really has this emphasis on as it says nourishing recipes to keep you healthy when it's cold and this is just packed full of so much interesting advice and ways to eat a bit more healthy as well as lots of recipes in this one so it's been really interesting reading um, about a lot of the sort of suggestions and tips in this book and I've been earmarking some of the recipes to try this winter so I think this one looks really interesting and if there's anyone in your life who's wanting to set a bit more sort of some healthier intentions in the new year then this might be a nice gift for them and then maybe slightly less healthy but a lot of fun <laughs> is this cookbook Norwegian baking through the seasons which I actually got as a birthday gift and I really love it there are some wonderful looking recipes in here, some of those sort of classic Scandinavian baking recipes that I'd heard of before, but also a lot of ones that I hadn't and I'm really keen to try. 
I also love that there's a seasonal aspect to this cookbook because you know how much I love seasonal living so I really like ones that go season by season through the year and yeah for any bakers in your life I think this one would be fantastic. Then a cookbook I've been really enjoying lately is this one by Julius Roberts, The Farm Table. There are some really wonderful recipes in this. I made a delicious soup. Um, it was a sort of a chicken meatball soup and it was so good. It was, it, was, it was quite time consuming, but it was so worth making. And this is that kind of cookbook, I think, for when you maybe have a bit more time and you want to make quite a special meal using really wonderful ingredients, then this is the type of cookbook to turn to. Julius Roberts, I believe, worked as a chef at Noble Rot, which is one of my very favourite London restaurants. We go there pretty much every time we go to London. It's amazing. So he really, really knows his stuff. And what I find inspiring about his story is he went from being a chef at a London restaurant to kind of packing all that in and starting life on a farm. <laughs> in the countryside. So there's a great sort of backstory to him and it's also just a really lovely cookbook. Then another cookbook that I've mentioned before but I definitely thought deserved another shout out is the Plain Cake Appreciation Society by Tilly Pammett. Um, this is an Australian writer. I love a good plain cake. That's I think my favourite type of cake. So this is definitely a cookbook that speaks to me and is a lovely one again to choose for any bakers in your life. I also have spoken before about how much I adore Diana Henry and this new edition of one of her most famous cookbooks, Roast Figs, Sugar Snow, Food to Warm the Soul. This new edition is just stunning. I'm so glad it's been brought out in such a lovely new edition. There's a great forward by Nigel Slater, who also adores winter. Diana Henry is a real winter lover herself. And this cookbook just really celebrates that season and the food that you can make and enjoy in the season as well. So it's a real favorite of mine. And then a cookbook that I've adored this year is The Secret of Cooking by B. Wilson. Recipes for an easier life in the kitchen. Who doesn't want an easier life in the kitchen? But in all honesty, I've really loved reading this book even more than cooking from it. It's just full of such interesting ideas about how to simplify your life in the kitchen and about cooking in general. B. Wilson is an amazing food writer, um, well, an amazing writer full stop. And so this has just been a fascinating reading and really inspiring to myself personally. So I think this would be such a good Christmas gift to anyone who loves cooking in your life. And my last selection are a few children's books. So first up, this stunning new edition released by Faber of A Traveller in Time by Alison Utley. I think you know how much I love Alison Utley's books. I adore her books for children as well as her ones for adults and I was so happy to see that A Traveller in Time has been brought out in such a stunning new edition. Um, it's illustrated as well, not with the original illustrations, but with some really stunning ones. I do love illustrated books. I mean, I think it's so important to have illustrated children's books. I think it's sad that that has been lost from so many children's books nowadays. They're just rarely illustrated now. So it is special to have an edition that is illustrated and the end papers are nice too. This is a book that so many adults as well as children love, but this would definitely make a very special gift for any young readers in your life. And then I've mentioned Catherine Rundle already, but I had to point this out as such a good book to give any young bookworms Impossible Creatures by Catherine Rundell. This is such a page turning book. I think it really fires up your imagination as well. 
Um, there are a couple of sad instances in this too that I just personally know would have upset me when I was little. So I think it's a good one to maybe read yourself and, and discuss and be able to discuss it with your child too. I just wanted to say that, but it's really such, such a gorgeous book. So it would make a lovely Christmas gift. And then I love this poetry book too, with a real focus on mythology. It's Gods and Monsters, Mythological Poems, edited by Anna Sampson and illustrated by Chris Riddle. You can see how beautifully illustrated it is. It's just such a magical book and a great one to choose if you want to instill a love for poetry from a young age. I think this one would be wonderful. And then finally, a book that I've selected for children, but really adults can enjoy this so much too, is this Roots of Happiness, A Hundred Words for Joy and Hope by Susie Dent. And it has gorgeous illustrations by Harriet Hobday. I love that there's a focus on words that just make you feel happy when you read them. And there's more about each word and the sort of history behind it. And it just is a book that fills you with joy and I think would make a wonderful gift. So that concludes my gift guide. I hope that you've enjoyed it and that you've found some inspiration from all of the books that I've highlighted. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, do check the video description box for all of the links to the books and also for my link and code for the Serious Readers Light. But yes, I hope you've got a wonderful festive season ahead. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching. Extra big thanks to those of you who pressed the super thanks on my last video, by the way. You're always so appreciated. I really do appreciate your support, but I appreciate everyone who likes and comments on my videos and of course who watches them. So thank you and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.